Hello, it's Denise from Women Beyond a Certain Age. The podcast today is about me. <laughs> it's about my trip that I just took. Some of you, a lot of you may know. It depends if you, you know, saw some of my postings on Facebook. During COVID, Cindy and I were invited to go to the south of France to stay at Anne Will and son's home near the Pyrenees. Uh, we couldn't get we couldn't get there because of COVID. I was invited to another place in France for an old friend. Couldn't get there, okay, because of COVID. I had planned a gorgeous trip to New York for four or five days to see Grace Young and Broadway and things that I love. Shot down with COVID, so. I hadn't gone anywhere for almost two, two, two and a half years. So a friend said, oh, let's go on a, let's go to Europe. Now I said, okay, um, the funnest part, uh, and I have some tips for you, but I have to tell you what was fun to me about this whole trip. Um, one, I hadn't been anywhere for a long time. So it was nice to get out of my, <laughs> it was nice to get out of my chair, but two, I went to some old haunts and I went to some new haunts and, you know, everything is different. It being not working any longer, being retired. And now when you plan a trip, it's, it's not that I used to, I mean, Cindy knows this from having us work together for 20 years. I worked for Holland America for 15 years, taught cooking classes on their, um, cruise lines. We worked for Viking and worked on the ship sometimes. Cindy and I taught at Porta uh, Vallarta, excuse me, Rancho La Porta in Tecate. We sometimes taught twice a year. Now, because we wanted to get away from our jobs. <laughs> now, we weren't getting away from each other, but we were getting away from our clients or work or the stress of that. I swear I'd go anywhere when people use, and then if they'd pay us for God's sakes, I'd go anywhere because it was just nice for a change. But when you're retired and you plan your vacation, it's different. Okay. Because um, it's just different. And we'll talk about that, but I appreciated being able to go away. I want you to, the last two trips to Europe, let me just give you some tips and then we'll talk about some of my, my favorite things. And because I know, and I can tell by my friends on Facebook and my friends on uh, Twitter and friends uh, that reach out to me, people are starting to feel comfortable about traveling again. So I think that's wonderful. And of course, people, a lot of us, not meaning me personally, but the industry is still recovering, okay? Because COVID was a very difficult financial situation for airlines, restaurants, hotels, you name it. But anyway, so let's talk a little bit about some tips and um, things that I noticed from traveling this time. And first of all, I want people to know my last two trips of year to Europe, I went to, I did go to Sicily the year before, still during COVID. And uh, that was a trip. We all wore masks, but guess what? I was with eight people. One of us couldn't get back on the airplane in Italy because they tested positive and had to stay a week in Italy. Um, so I, it was real. Now, my last two trips, I used miles, just so people know. I got all my airplane tickets for this last trip, all but one flight from Paris, uh, was it no, Venice to Vienna, those were all on one mileage ticket that I got through United. Okay, so it's kind of amazing. Now, I wasn't able to fly business class, but I was able to fly premium economy. So I got about five plane tickets for 60 something thousand miles and a couple of hundred bucks paying the tax. Okay, so I just share with people, I have had nothing but success and I'm not getting a kickback for this, nor do they support me in any other way, but I've had great success with my United, my Chase United card. Okay. It's the Explorer one. I get bonus points. I get passes to the, uh, their airport lounge. I get, and it's very reasonable. It's a yearly pass. 
I get um, a free bag, sometimes two free bags. So I just want to share with you, I know Sapphire Chase is a, a great card. I've had an American Express Platinum card. Though I have to tell you with the last increase in the cost of that, I'm not sure that it's worth the money right now. And I've, I I can be honest about that. But anyway, my United mileage card has gotten me two tickets to Europe and so reasonable in premium economy. So I just share that with you. The other reason I can say that, um, and I wish that someone was listening from them, when you're in Europe and you fly some of United's sisters carriers, you know what I mean? Um, Swiss Air, I think was one of them and stuff. I get bumped up. I've gotten bumped up on those airlines so many times to the next level. So that's just, I don't know if it's because I'm lucky. When I tell people that they look at me and I think they want to hit me because they say, I have never gotten a free upgrade in my life, but I have gotten many free upgrades. Maybe it's maybe it's because I look old and helpless. I don't know what it is, but I get free upgrades. Okay. So anyway, I'd certainly look into whatever credit card you use if you, um, you know, some people like cash back. My husband loves the cash back. I love getting free something with my credit card. So I have a United Chase Explorer and that's gotten me many, many plane tickets. Now, just a couple of other things about money. I was just in Paris, Venice, Vienna, and then I went to London. This is the current state of the fares. Euros, euros, euros in the first three. And then I had to change to the British pound. The exchange rate right now with the British pound was absolutely horrible. <laughs> it was like, if I paid a dollar, I was actually, I a dollar in British pound, I was only, it was, how, how do I say this correctly? Mm. Anyway, everything was costing me like a dollar and a half. OK, so I just want to say again, it's not just getting your plane ticket. It's not just getting a good hotel. It's not just getting a tour. You might want to look at um, what the exchange rates are in different countries. Now, I wouldn't have not gone to London, but I have to tell you something. It was a little bit shocking. OK, that's all I can say. Everywhere else, I didn't even notice. And I ate in great restaurants and we stayed in great hotels. But when I got to London, it was really obvious that um, the American dollar, I, I wouldn't say that it wasn't strong, but the, that the British pound, it was a tough conversion. Now, before you leave on your trip, you need to get some money, okay, local money. Because when you, you get to Europe, still in this day and age, even though the internet is everywhere, um, you still need a nickel or a dime. You need euros to use the toilet in every city I was in, okay? So if you didn't have change, you couldn't have used the toilet. <laughs> um, I kept all the change that I got in my pocket. Sometimes we got to new cities and cabs were not taking credit cards, okay? So again, local money. Now, um, we got an exchange place. It was not, you know, I, I changed $500 um, into euros, spent every single nickel of it. And then I went on to get some pounds, Eng English pounds and the last thing. And mostly I used my credit card because I wanted to use, I wanted to get more mileage. Now, when you are in most European cities, you can certainly check before you get there, but they still frown on American Express because it costs more money for them to accept American Express. So everybody wanted Visa or MasterCard. So I just share that with you. You're, you might find out your American Express card is not as valuable to you as just a Visa or a MasterCard. Um, now, and just so you know, in 20 days, because I had called ahead with my uh, United Mileage and they gave me a deal that for every dollar I spent, they would double it. Um, and I amassed 12,000 mileage points in only 20 days. Okay. So that was, that was wonderful. I didn't spend that much, but I amassed that many points. And another thing that's very important before you leave the States is you need to find out, um, about your phone charges. Now, AT&T, 
When I retired, I didn't need my business line like I used to. So I got a new phone line with AT&T. And one of the things that has totally improved is that I now have an international plan with AT&T that's $10 a day when I leave the country. That's it. Okay. $10 a day for unlimited text, data, uploads, internet. I watched movies on, um, you know, Amazon Prime in my, my room in Venice. So um, I, I, you really want to know what your phone, what your phone is going to cost. If this, ha this has changed my life because Cindy knows when we used to travel to um, other countries, if the internet charges were not paid by our client, we could come home to a $200, $300 phone bill because the charges were so high being out of the country. So that's just something to look at. And the other thing that I find that's absolutely um, essential is when you're booking the hotels, and this happened on this trip, almost all hotels in Europe will give you a complimentary or a reduced fee breakfast if you ask before you get there, okay? So even though it wasn't on their websites, to ask, say, ooh, do you have um, a breakfast inclusive? Oh, yes, we do. Or, or, oh, I'm glad you asked. Or, yes, it's if when you're booking your hotel room, it's only $10 for breakfast every day that you stay instead of whatever they charge to people um, when they get there. So, and I, and the reason to me, breakfast is really, really important. I like to get up. I like to have a lovely breakfast and a great coffee before I hit the streets of sightseeing. And of course, by having breakfast included in some of these rooms, you're saving 20, $20 a morning. Okay. So that's to my idea. Now on tech things, that I am, as Cindy's laughing that I would even use the word tech because it, you might as well, I'm a dinosaur. Okay, I am a dinosaur, I admit it. Now, but here's what I have had to learn. One, I didn't need my computer, okay? I did every single thing on my, my phone. People I'm with lug their computers and then they never use them. Well, I used to have to lug my computer when I worked, so I don't lug my computer anymore. This is what I did. I had an extra phone battery, okay, that you can buy at Amazon for about 30 bucks. I was using an old one that I had, but that way when you're out, if you're out all day long and you're taking tons of pictures and uploading them, your battery is going to run down. Well, you may not get into a restaurant that has an extra plug that will let you charge your phone. So I found the extra battery to be absolutely wonderful. And there's a great one on Amazon for like 30 bucks. This, I remember two years ago when a battery like that cost a hundred dollars on Amazon. So they have gone down in price and it's totally worth having. I want to say this, the reason, the other reason is still in the most beautiful hotel room in the world that we were in, it was an Airbnb on the Grand Canal in Venice. It was a palazzo that has been made into apartments, okay? We had a view of the Grand Canal that I, I've i experienced once before in Venice, but this was even better. It was so beautiful. And you open the windows and I, people, the, the boats going by and the workmen and people going to the markets. I mean, we were right there on the Grand Canal. It was extraordinary. In the same vein, <laughs> The palazzo, the stove didn't work. Okay, it was so Italian. It was so fancy and fabulous, but we couldn't turn it on. And when we called the guy who rented us the place, he couldn't turn it on either. So it was brand new, but it didn't work. The second night we were in our palatial palazzo, when I went to stick my universal charger in to um, into the plug to charge my phone and to use, uh, I think, was it a hairdryer or something, it blew up immediately. Now, I was so grateful it didn't, it blew up the plug. It didn't blow up my universal charger. And if you don't know or what I'm talking about, it's the universal, I bought it at the airport. It's a plug with the two prongs coming out and you stick it into any European outlet and it now will accommodate an American device, 
Okay. They have little inexpensive ones on Amazon, but I bought a better one because it had two USB plugs and a spot for a plug. And, but as I said, in that entire room, in the, in my beautiful bedroom, uh, there was only one, there were two plugs, one where it was convenient and one where it was hiding behind a table on the other side of the room that was not convenient, which leads me into the next. And I was just grateful when the fire, I did, I mean, I saw sparks when the fire broke out, it didn't hurt my um, universal plug, nor did it fry my phone. It just sent out sparks and kind of scared me. Um, but that plug was down for the rest of the days we were in Venice, which leads me to the next tip. For some reason, in my suitcase, I packed this incredis incredibly long charging cord. I mean, one of the ones you would use in your office so that you could, well, for some reason, I packed it. And you know, that came in very handy since the plug that was now convenient was dead. So across the room behind a table, I found another plug that didn't blow up. And I was able to put my converter there and use it to charge my phone. And as I said a few minutes ago, but I mean this, there were TVs and Netflix and almost every place we stayed, which was fascinating to me. You can get the code from the whoever rented it to you. But all the shows, of course, were in Italian when I was in Venice. So I watched, the, of course, the only shows that aren't in Italian in Venice were like murder shows and horrible shows. <laughs> and we wonder why we have a bad, I mean, the worst murder shows that I've never watched here in the United States. And I watched one or two of them in Italy, and I, but they were in English. And I thought, hmm, this really makes us look more rabid than we are. Okay. There were just killings and machine guns. And, but those people were speaking English. But what I did to fall asleep, because sometimes I need to read or watch TV for an hour before I fall asleep, I was able to watch Amazon Prime on my phone with my long charging cord. So it was lovely. It was a little piece of uh, something I liked because I'd started watching a show on Amazon Prime when I left and then I got to watch it again when I was in Europe. It was it was lovely. The continuity was lovely. Um baggage limits we you I'm sure you know this if you've gone anywhere. They now there isn't even a question. I mean, I remember in the olden days when you were 2 or 3 pounds over with your baggage limit the woman behind the woman or man behind the counter, the attendant that worked for the airlines, they'd say, oh, close enough. Well, now they say, oh, you're a pound over. <laughs> so they're going to charge you. OK, now they make little tiny, wonderful um, scales that people can buy, that you can weigh your own bag before you leave your hotel room or leave your home. I just know because I carry a medium sized bag, I know what I can lift casually and I know that it's under the limits. Okay. It's nothing close to 50 pounds. It's more like 37 or 38. I just know that from doing it so much. And so I never had a bag. I was always under a couple of pounds. So I suggest that to people, but that all turns into the bit when we get to, uh, weight of suitcases. But this is a whole nother podcast that Cindy and I are planning. Why do we all overpack? It's the biggest question. It's just like, it's as big as why are people afraid of dying? <laughs> why do people usually hate their mother-in-laws? I mean, this is one of the universal questions of life. I used to be an overpacker. Okay. So I am coming from a the corner of reform. Cindy and I used to travel together and she used to say to me sometimes when I came out with my suitcase, is that a condominium? Because the suitcase was so large and so heavy and I always had to pay overages and it was ridiculous. And what changed in my mind and in my life was when they took away porters and outside luggage guys, uh, you know, the from the airport and those lovely men carried my heavy suitcase and stuff for me and loaded it. When they all disappeared and I was stuck doing it myself, I realized I could not lug all that stuff. I don't carry any, anything that I can't handle, you guys. I have one small carry-on, small, and we'll talk about that, and I have a medium-sized suitcase. From this trip, I was gone 20 days. The biggest 
tip I can give people is we got to do our laundry once. So whether you can send your laundry out or you want to do it yourself in Venice, the washing machine worked. So we each did a load of laundry, which was fabulous. No dryers in Europe. You guys know that. So we had to take jeans or sweatshirts or anything. It would take two days to dry on a drying rack, just so you know, because they don't have dryers and they're never going to have dryers. So you just have to get used to that. But by being able to do laundry halfway through my 20 day journey, you guys, I didn't, I, there were two pieces that I came home with, two tops that I came home with that I didn't wear and that weren't dirty. Okay. So I was feeling incredibly positive. Every other piece of clothing in my suitcase I used. And I went out to dinner to a couple of times where it was fancy and different things. So, but that's about packing. And we'll talk about that at another time. Don't carry, now this is, Cindy's going to laugh and luckily you can't see her face. Don't carry unnecessary paper. All I can tell you is I loaded a copy. I took pictures with on my phone of my passport, driver's license, insurance cards, anything I needed. And it was all in one file on my, in, on my phone. Okay. My itinerary, everything. So I didn't have a bunch of pieces of paper and that wasn't anything I had to carry or manage while I was gone. It was all on my phone. Now, if I'd lost my phone, I would have been dead in the water, but I was okay <laughs> because I didn't lose my phone. Um, I People always tell you this, but it's really important. You need to, if you really have medications that you have to take, keep those either in your purse Put those in your purse or put them in um, your carry-on bag or a bag that's on the plane. Because as an example, we flew United. It was the smoothest flight to Paris I've ever had. Absolutely fast and efficient, not wonderful. And I, we never lost a piece of luggage. Actually, this was the least amount of trauma in all these different flights. Every every flight went smoothly. I don't know why, okay? But it did. But yet I saw other people on the same flights that had lost their luggage, okay? Or they didn't lose their luggage. Their luggage had gone on another plane or disappeared. So again, now for 20 days, I had to buy, I have a pill thing that's Monday, Sunday through Saturday to take all my supplements and pills. And I filled up three of those. Okay. So I had two in my carry on, one in my carry on luggage so I could go for a week if I needed to. And the other two lived in my check luggage. That was the easiest way. The pill separators that I bought the two extra new ones. When you take all those pills and it's on a different time zone and you get to hotels at different places and you're only there for four days and then you leave and you're going to another hotel, I couldn't keep it straight, okay, in my head with all those different bottles. So I found by having Sunday through Saturday written carefully for me, three different ones, all identical, that I knew what day it was and what pills I was supposed to be taking. Now, this is... Um, this was my other thing in my luggage. I keep a plastic bag full of tea, coffee, sugar, energize, C, that drink, um, some little instant coffee packages. I've carried it all over. But the reason I like to have it is in Europe and in Asia, almost every hotel room gives you a coffee pot. If not a coffee pot, a hot water plug in. So again, with time zone changes, if you were awaking at 5am and you wanted a cup of tea or coffee, but of course the hotel um, kitchen wasn't even open yet because they don't open till seven or seven 30, I could make my own tea and coffee. And I've done that for a million years. It's really simple. It weighs nothing and it makes it easy to, um, and it makes it easy to have some peace in the morning without having to go out on the street. The other thing I always do at every hotel is um, I go right to a store close to the hotel and I buy a couple of bottled waters and I buy a bottle of wine or soda, whatever I feel like, or pomegranate juice. And I have those in my room. So that way I don't pay um, the mini bar prices, okay, because they're and the mini bar prices were in every hotel, though the hotels were reasonable. 
everything was thir- every glass of wine in Europe, you guys, it didn't matter if it was good wine or bad wine or expensive restaurant or bad restaurant. Even in Italy, I'm talking house wines, you guys, everything was $13, $15 a glass, just so you know. And the bottled waters were all four and five, you know, dollars, American dollars, which meant they were seven dollars in um euros. The, I will say this, and this is, and I'm not blaming them. Everyone's bitching about the cost of groceries in America. Well, we're all suffering in this global economy with the same problems. Okay. Taxi cabs were $80 to go somewhere. Um, meaning if when you were going five miles or into from the airport, most of these costs were all clearly defined when you went to get into the cab, but I'm just telling people it was no cheaper if not, you know, it's it wasn't any cheaper being on vacation. That's all I'm saying. America's in a kind of an inflationary time right now, and so is Europe. Just so people know. One last thing that was really um, something that, again that got flagged, and people were talking about. Um, you have to make sure that your passport has at least three months before it expires. Because not once, but twice. Now, I still had four, four and a half months on my passport. Well, I haven't used it. And then when I noticed it, I thought, yikes, but I had already planned this trip. I was afraid to send my passport in for renewal because even with an expedited passport on the website, it was saying things like, oh, it'll be back in 12 weeks. Well, that's three months. So I was afraid to send my passport in and not have a passport at all when it was time to leave on my trip. So I went on the line and sure enough, it says if you have at least, you have to have the bottom line was three months before it expired. I did have that, but I need you to know not one, but two people at customs said to me, oh, you need a new passport. So they're looking, okay? So they're watching. So that what to me was the, um, it was fascinating. Now, since I've been home, I've gone online and I went and got pictures taken and I'm ready to get a new passport, but they're still saying, even with expedited, that it could take eight to 12 weeks to get a passport. Okay. So I usually have gone to expedited passport places and they'll take care of everything, but you know, it's up to six, seven, eight hundred dollars to get your passport renewed in an expedited office. Just a thought. You have to weigh what's important to you. Now, Cindy wanted me, so those were some of the tips that I had. And I'd actually, but I, I, I'll tell you something. I think the most important thing when you travel is this. I think it's your attitude. Okay. I think that you have people get these funny ideas. Oh, you're on vacation that nothing bad will happen. Everything can happen. <laughs> okay. And People that think that bad things are not going to happen to you on their vacation, I think are in denial because I will say this, other than the city of Vienna, and I, that was to me the jewel in the crown of this trip. And Cindy says that I should talk a little bit about that. So I'll just say this. Paris was lovely. Paris needs a good scrub. Okay. Paris is, is looked dirty to me. That's all. There's no other way to say it. It just needs to be good scrub. If you think that graffiti and stuff is um, just in America in big cities. Oh no, it's everywhere. Okay. It's everywhere. There were people who talked about garbage before I went to Paris and there were strikes and there was um, rioting. No, where we were staying they had their own private garbage pickup. We saw two of the saddest protesters I've ever seen with little sad flags. And uh, they weren't going anywhere, nor were they going to hurt us. So Paris was fine, but I have to tell you, it it was just different seeing it at this age. because, And I've been to Paris a half dozen times and stayed there and went to school there for a while. So I know a lot about Paris. It just, it I don't know how to say it. It needs a good scrub. That's all the only way I can say it. Um, and Venice, this is another tip. We were in Venice. I got married in Venice to my husband, Kenny. Venice is still beautiful. Cindy and I were in Venice in 2016 and we were only there for a day or a day and a half. And we had the loveliest quick trip there. We went to the famous bookstore. We, um, had gone in a Vaporetto, but this time in Venice, just so people, when you look at your calendar, it was spring break. 
Okay, so this the little the little charming back roads of Venice were filled with teenagers. Okay, on spring great and they were smoking and um i will say this the teenagers in venice seem just as surly and mean as the teenagers here in los angeles so that was interesting but that's okay venice i didn't care because we ate around where the palazzo was in these wonderful restaurants um and we were able to and took a vaporetto ride that was absolutely gorgeous and mostly in venice we just enjoyed the view from our living room okay that made up for everything and vienna was the sleeper that i didn't know about because i've never been to vienna but i need to and i had friends in vienna so i need to share with you if you've never been to vienna i would put it on your bucket list. It was the cleanest city I've been in and I don't know how long. It's one of the most beautiful cities. They have more green and open space in Vienna than in any city in Europe. They're known for it, their parks and um, and they have the best transit system in the world. It costs about a dollar a day for people that live in Vienna, meaning $365 for the year, but you can take any train, any bus, any public, okay? Uh, transportation. And it, it was so safe in the underground and so clean. And this is what's really amazing. Um, you buy a ticket out of the machine, but they're on the honor system in Vienna. So they very few people are going to check to see if you have a ticket, but people had their tickets out because they wanted other people on the train to know that they'd bought tickets. And I had friends that had been former students that had come to one of Cindy's in my workshops, and they took me out to a real Viennese beer fest joint is all I can call it. And I ate the most delicious ham and drank the biggest beers in the whole world. And it was stunning. Okay. But Vienna is exquisite. Also the museums rival the museums and their, their museums rival the Louvre in my opinion. Okay. Just incredible museums. And then we finished up in London and London, we were in this hip and happening area that I have never stayed there before. I usually stay, I have to admit I'm an old fogey. So I usually stay in places that are kind of established or places that I've known for 20 years, but we stayed in the Sloan square which is hip and happening. And I could walk to Harrods and walk to Fortnum and Mason. And there was the little hotel that we stayed in. Uh, you, when you walked out onto Sloan Square, there was either, there was a cab, there was a tube station, and there had to be 15 restaurants within a block of walking distance that you can stay in. So it was really lively and fun. And the, I will say this, I don't need to go anywhere for a while. 20 days away from home is a long trip for me. And I enjoyed every minute of it, but I'm happy to stay home for a while. But if anyone has any questions, please just um, feel free to private message me. Now, I forgot this tip and now I have to go back. I was just going to say goodbye and close, but never mind. Luckily, Cindy and I don't have a boss. Now, here's the gig. I always buy, after I talked about knowing how much my suitcase weighs, and I do, I like to bring some souvenirs home. I didn't buy anything for myself. I, it's not true. I bought one little piece of art for my bathroom that cost $42. But I love to bring home some souvenirs. So I bought a collapsible two, $22 inexpensive bag off Amazon. Had a nice shoulder strap. When going to Europe, I put my purse in it so it only looked like I had one bag and that was fine, though they allow you two carry-ons still on most airlines. But my coll collapsible bag was empty going. And then when I came home, I put the tea towels, the chocolates, a couple of little presents that I bought um, for friends and family. And I put them in that um, collapsible collapsible bag and had my purse and that was it put it in the overhead on top and traveled home safely so that's what uh again talk about weight and baggage because i'm telling you they really and i don't blame the airlines they're charging if people are over they're gonna charge you i've 
again, I had said one thing about being flexible. I think that the airlines, and like a lot of people, after the COVID um, epidemic, sure, they're making money. Sure, there's profits, and you hear this, but I also know that a lot of them have been suffering, and they're just trying to recoup some of their losses, or at least I'd like to think so. Okay. So anyway, thank you all. And I hope some of this, uh, my ramblings had some lessons in it. And again, if anyone wants to reach out to me, you're welcome to pro private message me or contact Cindy and I at womenbeyond at icloud.com. And uh, we continue to thank you for your support and for the lovely messages that we get. And that's it. So take care and happy travels. Thank you, Miss Cindy. Bye-bye. <laughs>